Well, as Tim promised, it's time now for a check of the grain as well as the livestock markets. We'll hold off on the livestock side of things here for just a couple minutes, but start things off as far as the CME group in Chicago and what is underway in the grain trade. We've seen some lower numbers take place, of course, a little bit, uh, just a hair lower, so not significant moves taking place. Now, we have got Brian Split joining us. Brian is with Allendale and based out of McHenry, Illinois. Uh, Brian, we've got another week underway, and we're also about to wrap up another month this week. Uh, so kind of give us a run down what are you paying close attention to for this Monday? Uh, you know, the uh, price erosion does continue. We saw the um, corn and wheat markets make some new lows, contract lows late last week, uh, while soybeans have been able to maintain some gains from the uh, last couple of weeks on some um, some export business. But, uh, you know, right now we're looking at uh, first notice day for the September contracts coming later in the week, and uh, any old crop corn bushels that uh, are sitting on a basis contract that haven't been priced yet or on these deferred pricing programs. Programs. Uh, the drop dead date for most of that stuff should be Wednesday's close, so there may still be some light selling we may need to see. Uh, and I would expect that after that, selling will dry up a little bit. Uh, Brian, to just sort of clarify some things, of course, we've got a lot of folks who may not be a part of the agriculture industry uh, listening, tuning into us. Just to clarify, explain what exactly that first notice day is because it's something that comes up on a regular basis. Right. So every contract before it expires will have a first notice day. And um, what that means is if you are long the day following first notice day, um, then you have the potential to be physically delivered on. Okay, so uh, a long contract, these contracts are tied to a physical product, and that's the whole point of this market. So any long contract that's long uh, after first notice could be delivered on. And uh, so the cash market is also tied to that where commercial facilities, if they have, let's say, a, a producer may set a basis contract with a commercial facility, they may have set the basis, but they have not set the actual futures price of that contract. So um, as you go into first notice, notice, there's two periods, option expiration day, a lot of facilities will use that where they force the producer to make their pricing or roll it to the next contract, and then the next would be before first notice. Um, so all the commercial facilities will be moving cash bids off to the December contract if they haven't already, and that will force that last bit of old crop to be physically priced. Brian, thank you very much for the clarification and certainly appreciate that. Now, we talk a bit about corn and beans, but let's also turn our attention to the wheat complex because the wheat market has seen a little bit broader moves taking place. In fact, I see this morning it was around two to five cents lower as we started the day. Yeah, the wheat market really has been the uh, the albatross around the uh, the neck of corn here. Uh, you know, besides the uh, the recent yield expectations that we've seen from the USDA, the wheat market just continues to make new contract lows. Uh, new contract lows made today after trying to, to fight the trend here late last week. Uh, you know, this would be, we've got seven weeks in a row of, of substantial losses in wheat. And, uh, you know, you're talking each week somewhere between 15 to 30 cents a week. So it's very hard for corn to try and stabilize as uh, one of its feed competitors is, is reaching uh, extremely competitive levels right now. All right. Well, Brian, if you'll hold on, we'll talk livestock here in just a moment. So with that, let's do take a quick rundown of what's taking place at the CME Group, starting things off with the corn market. Again, the corn pit opening this morning, just a couple pennies lower. Continuing with that, we've got nearby September down two at 336 and three quarters. December down one and three quarters. That's at 351 and three quarters. Into the soybean complex, the nearby September down four and a half at 934 and a half. November down three and three quarters at 940 and three quarters. Into Chicago, where also broad moves are being made. September down six and a half at 403 and a quarter. December wheat down four and a half at 430 and three quarters. Kansas City wheat September contract down seven and a quarter at 397 and a quarter. December down six and a half at 425 and three quarters and into the Minneapolis exchange. September down six and a half at 644 and December down seven pennies at six dollars 62 and a quarter cent. Well, stay with us. We're going to continue our conversation with Brian, but turn our attention over to the livestock complex next here on your market day report.
But before we take a look at livestock, we've got the cotton market moving significantly higher today and the oats market also moving up just by a couple of cents. Now with that, we're going to check back in with Brian Split. He is with Allendale based out of McHenry, Illinois. And Brian, you and I were talking just a little bit off camera. Of course, we had that cattle and feed report come out midday on Friday and uh, still kind of uh, rippling the market today. Something uh, worth paying attention to. Yeah, the market is uh, this morning buying the placement numbers, and uh, placements lower than expected. So we do have uh, some some sharply higher trade. Uh, worth noting, the October contract, which is where you're going to see the majority of the open interest and the volume right now, uh, that did go right to what I would consider the downtrend in this uh, in this October contract. Uh, made some highs in, in mid-July and uh, some secondary highs in early August. So if you just draw the downtrend line at that point, we went right up to it, and so far that's the high of the day. Uh, also reaching some resistance at uh, some mid-August highs around that 109.70 area. We jabbed up to 109.75. So I think the trade's going to be cautious. Um, you know, the bulls are going to want to see the market prove itself and maybe violate this downtrend and establish some footing over 110 before they come in and, and want to support it further. Otherwise, this market could very easily drop right back down 105 on a failure here. And turning our attention over to the hog complex, what about uh, that side of business for this week? Uh, right now, and I think you said the hogs, is that right? Yes. Yeah, um, you know, this December contract uh, really reached a, a price that seems to be pretty important for producers. We saw a couple shots of being able to, to hedge the 65 level. Uh, a lot of the, the hog producers tell me, you know, if I can avoid losing money in, in the December contract, then... Um, you know, I should be good from what I can do the rest of the year. And uh, so usually that means selling your break even or, or slightly below. Uh, so 65 is a tough spot. Uh, we're now taking out some um, some lows we made in April. So, um, you know, this hog contract could have some additional downside. And we really need to get back over 60 in, in the December contract to establish any kind of positive footing. All right. Well, Brian, if folks would like to get in touch with you, how could they do so? Uh, you can look us up online at www.allendale-inc.com, allendale-inc.com, and our number here is 1-800-262-7538. All right. Well, Brian, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us again. That's Brian Split with Allendale. With that, let's take a look again at the CME Group in Chicago and a quick rundown of the live cattle as well as the lean hog pit on this Monday's session. We've got August up 65 cents at 106.60, October up 239 at 109.32, and December August also on the upside, up $2.39 at $112.32. Into the feeder cattle trade, the nearby August up $1.33 at $142.70. September up $3.08. October up $3.45. Currently sitting at $146.40. Into the lean hog complex, the nearby October down $0.88 cents at $62.20. And December lean hogs currently down $0.85, pennies, setting at $58.10. So continued downside action in the lean hogs. Thank you, Marcus Editor Janet Atkinson.